Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we are taking a look at the Sonic Mighty 8K from Frozen. But before we get started, roll those credits. Okay, so the Sonic Mighty 8K, not a new printer from Frozen, but we are working with Frozen more and more. This was one of the machines that they sent over. We have a couple of new projects that are in the works, some big juicy ones that are all gonna be done in resin. We went to Frozen and we said, hey guys, we, we've not got the workflow to be able to do this in the time that we've got. And they said, don't worry, we've got exactly the kind of thing for you. Now, just a full disclaimer, we were not paid for this review, but we were sent this machine for free for the purposes of this review and for the project, and we will be allowed to keep it, which is great because we actually really love this machine. Um, but we weren't paid for the review. The opinions and everything we express in here are our own. Frozen don't have any editorial rights. They sent us the machine and their brief was, have at it, let us know what you think. So let's just go through the specs before we go through anything else. So we have a, we have a screen that will do you a print volume of 218 by 123 by 235 on the Z. It's a pretty good build volume. Um, the VAT takes a about 800 milliliters of resin to fill to maximum. The build plate does come factory leveled and it has a texture to it, which is gonna mean that you're gonna be able to lower some of your um, initial exposure times on those burning layers um, and not have to worry so much about adhesion. The build volume is incredibly versatile. So it has meant that we've been able to do masks. So we reprinted some of these. We did this cool little uh, face thing and then we also did some some minis with some detail as well. We'll get to those in a minute, show you some of the detail that it did. Um, these were printed with a variety of resins. So these were done with Area 1 resin. These were all done with Sunlu Grey resin. Uh, this was also done with Airy One resin and then the black pieces were done in a resin we are testing for a company that we can't tell you about yet but it's really exciting. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that another time. So the machine has its USB at the front. It has a beautiful large touch screen, which has a cool little screen saver that twirls around whilst you're, uh, whilst you're not using it. It is equipped with a webcam and a caveat. So when we got the machine, um, the uh, machine that we got had old firmware on it. We updated to the latest firmware. Um, which was really easy to do. Once we updated to the latest firmware, you can now access the app that lets you pair it with the Frozen Go app. The Frozen Go app um, lets you see your print history, see when your printer's idle. Uh, I think you can, you know, there's, there's a few other bits and pieces you can do with it as well. The app isn't super useful at the moment. And the reason it isn't super useful at the moment is because the webcam doesn't actually work, or at least on the version that we have yet, it doesn't work yet. So they haven't implemented time lapses, they haven't implemented live viewing. Um, a bit of a shame, because frankly, it, it would be really cool to be able to use that. Um, there is also a strange little feature, which is that the machine does come with Wi-Fi, but it comes with Wi-Fi via this USB stick that goes in the back. Now, if you don't want to use Wi-Fi, then you just wouldn't connect to your network. And if you did want to use Wi-Fi, I don't really understand why this comes as a separate piece and it's not just internally plugged into the device. But it isn't, and it plugs in at the back. There's also an Ethernet option as well if you want to hardline, if you don't want it on Wi-Fi. Um, the power switch for this is still at the back. Please stop doing that, everybody. Put the power switch at the front. That's where I am, and I'm the only one who needs to use it. So um, other than that, the machine is really, really well put together. Dual linear rails, nice big uh, lead screws, super smooth, super quiet when it's printing. Um, has an XY resolution of 28 ohms, which is pretty good. 
So obviously it's 8K as well. Frozen were the pioneers of 8K. They're one of the only people who made it a commercial success when 8K first came out, when most companies were languishing at 4K resolutions and things like that. There are still a number of, of, of different companies that haven't made 8K yet. They're up to 6Ks and 7K for the M3 Max and things like that. Um, the closest competitor to this is probably the Uniformation GK2, which is a great printer. I do prefer this. And the reason I prefer this is that this is compatible with Lychee and with Chi2 Box. I'm used to Chi2 Box. Uniformation is technically compatible with Chi2 Box, but I got really mixed results. And the only way I got good results was by using Uniformation's slicer, which is a, uh, a rebranded version of, of, of Prusa slicer. Um, and, uh, and I don't like it. I don't like that slicer. I like Chi2 Box. That's what this works with. Does also work with Chi2 Box Pro. And there is a version called Frozen Dental, I think, or Frozen Professional that you can download that's specifically for dental molds and things like that. The machine is primarily metal, except for the orange plastic cover. Um, and honestly, it, when it got out of the box, so we did a live stream on this, really, really easy to set up, really, really easy to level. Um, immediately was working and printing inside of inside of 20 minutes worth of going through and doing all of its auto setup. Um, really, really happy with it. One issue we did have was the USB stick that is included is not good. So, um, so I don't know what it was, but when we were trying to flash the firmware, this... Um, USB stick was was really not was really not liking it, so we had to use a different one. Um, we tried reformatting it to the 2048 bytes or whatever it was um, at FAT32 format, and everything else that was suggested. And frankly, it just did not work properly. It kept it kept missing files, it kept misreading, whatever. So if you are to buy one of these, I would highly recommend going out and buying a different USB stick and then popping this one straight in the garbage, which is where our one's going to go. Price wise, so price right now on the Frozen website is 649 US dollars and that's free shipping to the US. So that's about 600 pounds at the moment given a time of filming before the apocalypse happened and everything fell apart, um, about 600 pound. And what you are getting here is a really high quality machine for that. Once the webcam is working, which will be turned on in a future firmware update, uh, once the firmware is working and the webcam is on, you really will have a, a top class machine at that point. It doesn't have auto refill. But frankly, because of the build volume and because of the size of the vat, you don't really need it. It's not, it's not massively um, required. It doesn't have um, a, any sort of um, air filtering, any active carbon filters or anything like that. So you do want to make sure that whenever you're resin printing, you're printing in a well-ventilated area. Resin material as it goes through, uh, as it prints, is a carcinogen um, and it will give you headaches and you can have reactions. Whenever you're handling uncured resin, these are all cured, so you don't have to worry about my little hands. Um, but, uh, but when you're handling resin, you should always wear gloves and you should always make sure you've got a clear work area as well. Alongside this, we also have the wash and cure station. Um, so the wash and cure station is brilliant. It is a seamless workflow. So you literally take the build plate out of this. It, the build plate fits directly into the cage that goes into the wash and cure. You turn that on, you take your prints off, you put them onto the, um, onto the cure station. That cure station does a really, really good job. I cannot stress, if you wanna have good results, having an effective way to wash and cure is really, really important. So I was part of the bucket crew for quite a while in that I just had a bucket of IPA. I would put my prints in and I would sort of wash them around. Um, it really doesn't compare to having an actual wash station. Um, so this the, the, the cure station also has fans in it, so it dries off the IPA first and then it cures the print. Um, it makes a really big difference when it comes to doing super, super fine detail stuff. So some of the minis that we've got down here, 
they're really, really small. They're really fine detail. And frankly, they did, you know, that wash and cure brought them up absolutely beautifully. So without further ado, let's take a little look at some of the prints. Okay, so let's start with test prints. So we will begin with the Rook. So this is a test from Frozen. It's nice and small. There is a helix inside of this that again printed really, really nicely, really, really clean. We have here the Prusa SL1 test. So all the pins on the front there, you can see they printed everything on here printed exactly as you wanted it to came out nice and clear you can even see the glasses that are in the model there as well so that came out really nice so you can then we have the amalabs um, print you can see that came out really really nicely everything on there nice and clean all the surface textures and everything came out as well Remember, these are all done with the stock settings. So this here is one of the exposure tests that we do. So again, really thin, came out really nicely. And then finally, we have the obligatory frozen test here. And again, dimensional accuracy was bang on. You can see all the holes are see-through done a really, really good job on that. So then we come on to some of the pre-supported models. So these models here are really, really small and really, really detailed. You can see, there we go. So you can see just how thin everything on that is. All the wispiness came off again. These models here were all pre-supported. So they have come out really, really beautifully. Even the finger on the hand has come out exactly as it's supposed to. Really, really happy with these. Got a little skeleton here. With that big scythe really good all these thin bones all printed nice look how clean that hair is and how sharp that hair looks really really good and then finally we've got one more skeleton there it's got this nice big curved crescent axe thing beautiful beautiful details really really good job there so then we come to something a little bit larger. So this here is a big griffin with an axe. What I want to show here is just how detailed these wings are and how absolutely glorious they came out. So that right there, absolutely astonishingly beautiful. That is, that is a highly detailed model. You can see all of the all of the grooves in the feathers, everything. Really, really high quality print there. This one is a cool Eiffel Tower print. So this one, again, this is called the Twisted Eiffel Tower um, and it is a good test. This prints with no support, so obviously it prints that way up. Prints down and you can see it's all twisted and really, really nice. Okay, so I will just show one of the models with the supports still on. So this is one of the pre-supported models here done in that developmental resin. And as you can see, it has done an absolutely beautiful job. Absolutely stunning. Now again, this is pre-supported. It's not necessarily how I would have done the supports because you can see the hair is not necessarily perfect, but that's the supports, not the printer. So this here done an absolutely beautiful job on those surface textures there. There we go, beautiful. Then we come on to things a little bit larger. So this here is a Bane mask. This was printed 
upside down, or sorry, it's printed like this. Um, very difficult to fit this on, only just about did it and it doesn't quite fit my face. Um, and then we've got like a Toshimi mask as well. Quite cool little masks. They've all got like, uh, they've got these attachments here so you can put Velcro around them. And then we did this little beauty as well. So this here comes off and you can just see how crisp the detail is on this, how well it came out, and most importantly, how well it got washed and cured as well. That's obviously due to the uh, wash and cure system that we had, just slots into this hand, and then this just fits into the base. It's not glued at the moment, but that came out really, really nicely. I'm really happy with that. So as you can see, we are incredibly happy with the detail this is turning out. Remember that this is 8K and the, and the Mega is 8K as well, but the quality you will get out of the Mighty will be larger. 8,000 8K pixels stretched across 15 inches or condensed down into this size um, screen means that this has a higher pixel density per inch. And as a result, when you're doing minis, they will be a lot more detailed um, and it is noticeable. Now, what we haven't used here is the 8K resin that has come from Frozen. So Frozen have got a, a regular resin um, and, and an 8K resin. We will be doing another video showing the difference between 4K and 8K resin. There is a fair price difference. So, um, so if you're using the 8K resin, you really do want to know why and what you're getting out of it and everything else. So we'll do a separate video on that. All of this is with just normal bottom of the range, pretty much as cheap as you can get resin. So Sunlu, I think is about 15 pound a litre. Uh, the Airy one is about 18, 19 pound a litre and the development resin that's coming out is, is going to be uh, is going to be pretty cheap as well. So um, so let's get to the Honey Badger scores. What would we score this device? I would give this a nine out of ten. And the only reason I'm giving it a nine is because I would have liked to have seen an active carbon filter on it. That's the only thing. And that's just for me. The space that I print in isn't particularly well ventilated, um, doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have a lot of space. And it would have been nice if I'd have had an active carbon filter on it just to try and sort of filter out some of those carcinogens. Um, but, uh, but quality wise, ease of setup, ease of use, this machine does everything really really well really really well i'm excited to see what happens with the webcam um i would really like to see that working sooner rather than later i think the time lapses we could make with that are pretty cool um so i i really want to get that working as soon as humanly possible um but uh but other than that i mean this machine has everything we've thrown at it all the different resins and everything else these are stock profiles we didn't change any settings whatsoever. All of these models, well, uh, so this model we supported ourselves in Chi2 Box. This didn't require any. Most of these came with um, pre-supported versions. I've even got the one that we left the supports on for you so you can see what that looks like. And I have to say, it did everything we threw at it, it did it flawlessly. It's an absolutely fantastic printer for hobbyist grade people. Um, even when you go into prosumer space, you're not gonna find much that performs the, outperforms this. It's nice and quick, it's nice and quiet, really is basically everything you need, uh, minus, that, minus that sort of active carbon filter and the air filtration system. So, other than that, Nothing to do but say thank you very much for joining us. Keep an eye on the channel. We've got some really cool projects coming up soon. You're going to see a shift in away from doing reviews a little bit and going back to our roots, sort of showing you more models, more prints, more techniques, and really starting to show you some of the painting techniques that we use as well. So keep tuned to the channel to do that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks very much.